Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I certainly hope you're having a real fine day. Okay, what this video is about is a review on these Chota Outdoor Gear STL Plus Belt Weighting Boots, size 11. I do have an 11 foot, 11 shoe size, whatever have you. And I think the reason why they call it STL Plus is because these boots utilize belt soles plus metal cleats on the bottom. I'll show you that. Also be aware of the fact that Chota... You might want to go to Chota's website, but they have lots of other footwear and lots of other wading boots besides these guys right here. This is just one model. Okay, when you get these, they don't come with the cleats installed. you got to install them. There's 14 cleats per boot, 28 cleats in the set. I would advise you to put some of these cleats in because some guys are saying they only put just a few in the front and a couple in the back and call it good. But I took keen notice of the fact that these bushings right here, these rubber bushings or rubber, are pretty doggone hard. Because I've walked around in my house making sure that these things fit me, not with the cleats on. By the way, don't walk anywhere like on an anoleum or anywhere that's really, really super slick, marble or any of that with these cleats in there. And don't use these for ice climbing. I'm just going by what the prompts that Chota has given me anyway. <laughs> so it's up to you what you want to do with these cleats. You don't have to install them. Okay, this belt, whatever this belt is, I'm some kind of a polyethylene poly, pro, poly or I don't know. Now I was reading that this is, you know, some specialized kind of belt here, but it's 7 sixteenths of an inch thick in here. I measure with my calipers, almost a half an inch thick. Okay, the uppers on this guy right here are real leather that's tanned leather according to Chota. Uh, I, it's my understanding that you are going to get some kind of shrinkage in, in this boot on the, on the upper part here. But it's also my understanding that if you wet the boot before you go fly fishing, it helps out a lot with that factor, okay? Uh, it's got a real nice kick plate back here. It looks like the stitching on the soles is nice. The quality is here. You you can just definitely see it and definitely feel it. It's got this speed lacing, this through lacing right here, where you just, you know, suck it up like this until you get up up in here. And then, of course, you, you're you going to, you know, you're going to flip your lace like this and, and hook it in this guy here, you know, and then the same with this other side. You know, and then you're going to take and suck that ball down right there. You follow me? And that's about all there is to that. Now, this blue sock that's sticking out here, this is a wet sock, guys. It's a it's a 3-millimeter neoprene wet sock. I, even though these are 11s, they, they, with that sock on, these boots still fit me just fine, okay? But while I'm talking about boot size here, if you say got 11 and a half foot, I would, in this particular Chota brand, this model right here, I would probably go to a 12. Or say like if you had a 10 and a half foot, I'd probably go to an 11. But such as say you got a solid 10 foot, I wouldn't jump up a whole size and boot. I just wouldn't. Because they've already allowed, because I can put these 3 mil millimeter neoprene wet socks on and these boots fit just fine they're not loose and they're not tight they're perfect okay uh okay let me kind of set that boot aside and grab up this other one now here's the cleats and i left these not sunk in purposely for this video here and i'll tell you just a little bit about this cleating system so it you know it doesn't bother you you know or worry you to to deal with these and so what you're going to be dealing with let me let me throw a few little my props out here to okay like i say 14 cleats in here i left two of them out to, to show you some but right here this yellow handle jobber you see here this is a hex driver a quarter inch hex driver okay and that's you're definitely going to need a these screws, if you will, these self-tapping screws, they've got a slot in them where you can use a screwdriver, but trust me, you're going to want to either get a quarter-inch socket or a quarter-inch driver like I got here, because the reason being is you got to put a lot of pressure down 
you know, to get these to start, you might even have to take the, the boot like I did and cradle it in your, underneath your arm because it takes, <laughs> that's the only hard part is getting these started. You have to put a lot of downward pressure with your driver or your socket or whatever you're using. But once you get them started, they go in pretty good. Now, let me tell you this much. When you turn these in, okay, when you sink these in, when the when 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 this cleat gets down when you've got it seated down to the bottom of that bushing, make sure that you only turn it about a half a turn more. Do not over tighten. It is very easy to over tighten those doggone cleats. And then they're stripping them out, okay? Now I imagine you probably noticed that there's some white on my on these self-tapping screws. That's just because I put a little Teflon tape on these, okay? Now, do you have to do that? No, it's just something I did. Each one of these screws has got, you know, just, it, just only about two winds of Teflon tape. And why did I do that? To give me a little bit more surface on these screws, and hopefully they'll stay in a little bit better, okay? Now, let me show you something here real quick. Here is two screws right here and you can see one I've got Teflon tape on it and there's a stock screw and you do not have to use Teflon tape like I say it's just a crazy idea that I had all right no big deal there but you will be dealing with 28 of these buggers so and I don't recommend that you glue them in or shoe glue or epoxy or any of that stuff because you may have to get that screw back out of there again you follow what I'm saying, and you know, and if you've got it all cemented in there and whatnot, Abby, you might have some trouble getting that doggone thing out. And okay, let me grab up this card. Okay, this guy right here will tell you. I measured them screws just so you know, just for your information. They got a quarter inch hex head, and they're seven three uh, thirty seconds of an inch in diameter. And they're 7 sixteenths of an inch long, and they are a self-tapping screw, as you can see right there. Hopefully. I've been having trouble with my light in my house here. <coughs> We've been having some weird weather up here in Montana. Anyway, like I say, this Teflon tape is just plumber's Teflon tape. That it, This is just my barnyard idea, because if you don't get this tape wrapped on that screw the right way, it'll just crawl right off. But I just put a couple lines of Teflon tape there to add a little bulk into the screw, if you will, as you can see with this guy right here. Uh, you know, just, just hopefully so that it'll help the cleat stay in there a little bit better. But once you, once you, you know, take your nut driver or your socket or whatever have you, like I say, I couldn't reiterate this enough, and you sink that screw down in there, once it bottoms out, I would only turn it about a half of a turn. You know, because I, you run the risk of, you know, stripping out these bushings. And that's about the only thing that's weird is, is getting these started. you got to lose a lot of downward pressure. And I wanted to make this video while these boots were still new because, uh, <laughs> you know, after I start fishing this summer with them, they're going to be, you know, they're just not going to be in a condition for me to do any kind of a review. But at the outset... Before I start using these, these look awful good. If I was you, I probably wouldn't be afraid to buy a pair of them, but they are kind of expensive. I got them on sale, these particular chodas on Amazon, and, you know, but I noticed that the price went back up on these, and I think they're running right now around that $150 mark. I get around $125 for that pair right there. Okay, that's enough for this review right here, but those are some real good, high-quality-looking uh, wading boots. I haven't put them to the test yet, but I definitely will. Okay, thank you very much for watching the movie file. We'll see you on down the trail.